Rod Terwell owns and operates two small businesses. We've got the Rods Racers Car Dealership in Kew, which sells cars. And we've got Cleaner Cars in Camberwell, which cleans cars. So the important thing to remember with this question is one person can own multiple businesses or what we call accounting entities. So we need to remember that they are separate and distinct from each other, as well as the owner of the business. So what we need to remember here is that given that both of Rod's businesses are similar and many have the same customers, he has decided to combine the financial reports of each firm into one overall consolidated set of reports. Is that the right thing to do? Can you combine separate accounting entities into one set of financial reports? In addition, both firms have a phone plan with Telstra, so Rod often pays the accounts for both firms from the bank account of Rod's Races. So two Telstra bills, yet they're both being paid with money from Rod's races. Explain how Rod has breached an accounting principle in this situation. So we've just got out seven accounting principles that we're looking at, and we need to find one uh, that he has breached by combining these reports and the telephone bills. So you should have kept them separate rather than actually combine them into one set of reports. And also the bills, we're not happy with paying both bills with the money from just one of those businesses. So he has breached the entity principle by doing these things. The definition of the entity principle is the business must be a separate accounting entity from its owner and any other entities owned by the owner. And that must mean that their transactions and financial records should be kept separate from the owner's personal transactions and the transactions of any other businesses the owner owns. So in this case, we should have kept those two accounting entities separate, and that must have meant we should have had one set of reports for Rod uh, races and one set of reports for cleaner cars. We also should have had the Telstra bill for Rod's races being paid with money from that business, and the Telstra bill for cleaner cars, that should have been paid with money from uh, cleaner cars. So explain how Rod has breached an accounting principle. First thing we're going to do is identify a principle. We said entity. Second thing we'll do is define that principle. So we don't need to give the whole definition. That definition had quite a bit in it. Let's get a nice concise version and say the transactions and reports of each business should be kept separate from those of the owner's other businesses. Last thing we need to do now is relate that to the question. So in this case, Rod has breached the entity principle by doing two things. One, combining the financial reports of each firm into one instead of producing separate reports. And two, paying the phone bill of both firms from the bank account of Rod's races. Let's look at our marking. We've got one mark for identifying entity a second mark for defining the entity principle, and lastly, our third mark is for relating it to the case study.